podcast you're listening to. This is the one you chose. Welcome to Game Cola Podcast number 10, the Big E3 2009 preview. In this podcast, you will hear the Game Cola crew talk about what games we're going to see at E3, what games we'd like to see at E3, plenty of rumors about what's going to happen at E3, and plenty of getting off topic. That's the podcast for tonight. I hope you enjoyed, everybody. Okay, let's start the podcast. Okay. okay. Let's start the podcast. What are you waiting for? Are you re- We're waiting on you because you're sitting there playing with the puppies. Yeah, Marianne needs to move closer to the mic. She can bring the puppies with her, maybe. This is the podcast you're listening to. This is the one you choose. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Game Cola podcast. Uh, my name is Michael Gray. I'm your host for tonight. I uh, write stuff for Game Cola. Hello, I'm Paul Franzen. I'm the editor in chief of Game Cola. Marianne Fenwick, um, I just do things. Hi. Okay, so tonight on the Game Cola podcast, we are discussing E3. 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 What about it? Well, E3 is happening this month, uh, around the time this podcast is being released. And is there anything anybody's particularly interested in seeing at E3? Um, there are there are a couple games. I, I read your uh, your preview column that, depending on when this podcast comes out, is in the current issue of Game Cola, or will be in the next issue. It's going to be in the June issue, regardless. It will be totally out of date, because the event will be occurring by the time the uh, issue <laughs> comes out. Well, there were there were a few games that jumped out at me. Um, Bioshock 2 and the Ghostbusters game. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty hesitant about both of them, though. Um, Bioshock 2, I really like the original one, but <clears throat> I'm, I don't really understand how they can make a sequel, because... Uh, I mean, it was it was it was a very self-contained story. Like there was not really an obvious way to make something that happens before or after it. Plus, uh, the guy that like the head designer of uh, the original one, Ken Levine, won't be working on this at all. Mm-hmm. So those those two things kind of make me nervous. I'm kind of afraid that uh, it's just going to be a really boring game that just has Bioshock in the title. Yeah, and they expect people to buy it because of that. So I kind of I'm looking forward to. I have a question. It. Yes. Was Bioshock the one that takes place under the sea? It does. It's not... Uh, under the sea, the under the sea. Yeah, there are big daddies and little sisters. Yes. It, it is It is an apocalyptic environment, but I think... Oh, that's never been done before. <laughs> Whatever, Bioshock's still cool. Yeah, I'm sure it is. See, it, it's a post-apocalyptic underwater. It's totally different. And so there's game. that, and then there's Ghostbusters. I'm apprehensive about that for kind of a similar reason. Uh, actually, no, it's not that similar um, because it's a licensed game, so while it's a license that I'm a big fan of, uh, the game is probably going to be completely worthless like every other licensed game. So I was going to make a Ghostbusters slam at the moment. It would not be well received. Well, the game is being written by uh, what's-his-face, Dan Aykroyd and right. Mr. Harold Ramis who uh, apparently are two of the Ghostbusters themselves. Yes, that, that that's true, uh, and they like they have all the original, well, most of the original cast doing the voices and everything too. Yeah, Rick Moranis, he has class, so he didn't do it. And uh, well, he's no, retired. That's not why he didn't do it? He didn't do it because he's a lazy bum. He's retired, dude. If I, I was retired, lazy. I wouldn't do it. Retirement to provide a voice for a video game. Yeah. How much effort does that? For like an afternoon to record dialogue. He's so lazy. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Okay, hold on a second. Let me defend the honor of Rick Moranis here. <laughs> He's retired, and B, he's pissed off about being typecast as a nerd in every single thing he ever does. It pays. Take the job, loser. It's paid well enough. The Honey I Shrunk, uh, whatever you call it, the Honey I Shrunk series got him enough money so that he's basically, it's like, hey, I've got money now. I'm going to live the high life and just, he you know, take, not work take, for a living. He can't take an afternoon out of his busy schedule of just sitting around and being lazy to record dialogue for this game. Seriously. Come on. Oh, Whatever. That, that's my opinion. He's a lazy bum. Oh. Well, I yeah. like Mr. Moranis. He's a pretty good actor, I think. Oh, I mean, I, I really like his stuff. I just am I, I'm annoyed at him right now. Speaking of... Back to video games. 
So uh, is there anything from E3 you're looking forward to? Oh, uh, do, 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 do. Phoenix Wright, uh, the next Phoenix Wright uh, game, which I don't know if Phoenix is going to be in it. Has that been confirmed by our Japanese friends yet? <laughs> I, well, uh, I have not heard from our Japanese friend one way or the other about it. Oh. Well, I mean, I know our Japanese friends have been saying that, you know, Gumshoe's in it, and they told you that Francisca is in it, but I'm like, is Phoenix oh, I read in that it? On, like, I think I read that on Wikipedia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was checking the Phoenix Wright, Phoenix Wright Wikipedia, so no worries. That's me citing my source right there. I read it on Wikipedia. Well, Wikipedia is a good source. I'm tired of everybody who player hates on Wikipedia saying it's a bad source. Marianne, talk about this. Those people who player hate would be professors, teachers of any kind. No, oh, it just shows no work if you look at the facts on Wikipedia. It's accurate. I don't know why they're so upset. Um, it can be. What do you mean it can be? Have you ever looked up inaccurate facts on Wikipedia? Well, I, I actually have a tip for any listeners out there who want to cite Wikipedia as a source in their term paper. This is uh, something that uh, another game called the Staff Writer tell, uh, told me he used to do. Is he would just cite, he would, uh, he would uh, use Wikipedia to go look and see what uh, Wikipedia cited, and then <laughs> go use those reference materials. Yeah, so that's, that's the exact totally same thing totally I do. About. I did that in my E3 preview column. That was the source of all my sources for E3, and that's how I know that Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games sold 10 million copies. That is very depressing. Can anybody believe that? What about you, Marianne? I'm wondering why this is. <laughs> She's playing on her cell phone. Now. I am not. This oh, okay, I'm going to have to cut that out, but for those of you who weren't listening because I cut it out, Marianne just made a very awkward excuse to leave. <laughs> so Mario and Sonic. Um, Mario and I, Sonic. I, I well, I know I I will I will fess up. I bought the game, the original one, and I bought it because I was totally psyched about Mario and Sonic being in a game together. Uh huh. So I wonder if other people did that too. But uh, I regretted my decision very much when I actually played the game and. Um, Mm -hmm. they, they, the, the mini games just they weren't that much fun, and they were kind of they like actually hurt your arm and your wrist to play them. Oh like, wow! Like uh, there were a few of the track and field games that were particularly painful. So that's interesting. So uh, but oh, I don't know. I guess I'll save that for uh, segment four when we talk about uh, Wii Sports too. But I'm not so sure about the sports games. But there's Mario and Sonic for the Olympic Winter Games. We'll see if the sequel does any better. I'm, I'm predicting no. Well, it's got they've got uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. He decided that Zelda is crappy, so he's going to work on Mario and Sonic. Oh wait, he's actually working on this game. He's the director. That's the pet project he's working on. You're kidding. I'm not. I'm not kidding. Wikipedia. Well. Maybe, 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 well. maybe uh, it'll make this game good. And in the meantime, we can get that awesome uh, Zelda Rides Around on a Train game for the DS. That'll be fun. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Have you heard Zelda anything about... Zelda Rides Around on a Train? There are no trains curious. in the world of Zelda. I'm mad. Have you, have you heard about this? The new Zelda game is Link riding a train. Cartoon Link, or Toon Link, whatever you call it. He's riding on a train. They do not have trains in the world of Hyrule. I'm so mad now. So, the, yeah, they decided... Oh. They decided what? They went to the Industrial Revolution there? No, it just makes me sad that everybody wants to see, like, Wii Zelda because it's been, like, three years since they gave us GameCube Zelda ported to the Wii. <laughs> I don't count that as a Wii game, by the way. I it was released at the same time as the... Oh, it's still a Wii game. It's not it a GameCube It was a Wii game. launch title. That's because I've only played the and GameCube version. I got the feeling they also released it on the GameCube. Of course. You know, you know what they did for the Wii version? Uh... Because Link is left-handed, right? He's left-handed in the GameCube version, but when they put it on the Wii, they were like, hey, nobody's left-handed. So mm -hmm. they reversed the entire game. Yeah. Like the whole game is backwards. So, so that uh, to accommodate uh, the, the right-handed population who would be swinging their swords with their right hands <laughs> with, uh, with their Wiimote. Yeah, so that's... So I thought that was kind of funny because um, Lizzo had the GameCube version, I had the Wii version, and she tried playing the Wii version, and she was very, very confused. 
it is. That's why I haven't played the Wii version because when I just see footage of it, I am just confused as hell. And I had to mention that like every single time I mentioned directions in my guide for Twilight Princess. <laughs> it's like for those of you who are in the Wii version, I mean left. <laughs> then what does a lefty do with the Wii version? I don't know. Screw I think over, a just might have been a game 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 Actually, yeah, that would have been a, kind of a cool idea if they had let you uh, choose. Did they? I don't remember checking the options menu. Nah, uh, I didn't play it. I doubt they would have bothered. It was enough work, I'm sure, to switch it over. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you play the Wii version of the game, Paul? Uh, yeah. Well, part of it. Um, see, I have this thing with, with Zelda games. I usually play, like, the first... You know, two or three dungeons. I think I've actually started almost every single Zelda game that exists and gotten to about the third dungeon. And then when I'm at the third dungeon, I, I tend to realize that I don't actually like Zelda games that much. <laughs> yeah. But the original you... NES one, the Super Nintendo one, uh, Game Boy, the original Game Boy one, mm -hmm. Ocarina of Time, and Twilight Princess. All of them. It took me until the third dungeon to remember that I don't actually like Zelda that much. I think with uh, Twilight Princess, you should only play up to the first dungeon. <laughs> well, I, I got bored when they made me run around uh, checking for what was it like little glowing things. That was the, the that was horrible, and they only did that for the first three ones. Oh uh, yeah, that <laughs> whoops. Maybe I should have kept playing them because that was the the first thing. That was the, the a collection challenge. It was crap. But no, Are this is red coins again. Yeah, <laughs> but no, this ties into a uh, E3 because uh, they unveiled Twilight Princess at an E3. And what they did is they had a fancy playable demo version of the game, which just covered, uh, you know, the first town all the way up to the first dungeon. And that's why in the game you'll notice that there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do at the beginning of the game, which you never do ever again. It's all cut out of the rest of the game. Link being able to call his hawk buddy Tobias. <laughs> You only get to do that at the start of the game, and then never again. And riding your horse to jump over fences never happens again. Uh, the weapon of the first dungeon, you only shoot it twice in the first dungeon. That's the only place you have to use it. Wow, I stopped at, like, the perfect time, then. It immediately gets replaced, yeah. Aw, oh, but you didn't stop at the perfect time. You get to meet Mr. Er, Midna. Oh, I, I, wait, I, I hung out with Midna for a while. Yeah. When I write my uh, review of, uh... Twilight Princess, which I've been, like, meaning to write for the past six episodes. I'm no, like, you're going to have a review three years after the fact. <laughs> yes. That's what Game Cola does. <laughs> we don't have very many or new 20 game years reviews. after the fact, I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. We need to have a Twilight Princess podcast, or I need to actually write my article so I can spout how much that game is kind of lame. <laughs> we should make that a topic at some point. I know Lizzo played through the whole game, and I think she liked it. It's good, it's just, it's not good. <laughs> if that makes any sense whatsoever. I don't know, I think, I think Link to the Past, uh, the first three levels of that were my favorite so far. Yeah. It's Only just... that one was cool, because wasn't that the one that had, like, the alternate universe in it? They all have an alternate universe in it, Paul. <laughs> do they? You're they all that do. That, no. With, with Ocarina of Time, you have the alternate universe right after the third dungeon, when Link goes seven years into the future... Where the bad guy has taken over. Playing. Yeah, the bad guy takes over the land, and, you know, seven years later, that's when Link shows up. He's like, oh crap, now the world is taken over by evil bad guys. Now, see, that actually sounds kind of cool. No, no, now I'm tempted to play it again. Yeah. Of course, I probably wouldn't get that far, because I, I think I just don't like uh, the puzzles that much. Um, this is another... I just said someone lazy. <laughs> I just like the combat. I like swinging my sword and hitting things. I don't want to have to think. Isn't that mostly about strategy too? Or it can be? Not in Zelda games. So you're into the games where you beat the boss if you only press the A button fast enough. Uh, well, I, I can make it a... It can be a little more complicated than that, but... <laughs> Sometimes you have to put in the B button too, yeah. Not not, not enough that I have to look up look it up on game FAQs, then I start getting bored. <laughs> then why don't you like Super Smash Bros. Brawl? Oh wait, that's no, me. I, Never well, I mind. Played it yet. I'm the one who hates that game. It's got Mario and Sonic in it. That's going to be the main draw for Paul. <laughs> it actually would be. No, I, I would. I would be so psyched if they made like a cool Mario and Sonic game. I think I wrote about that in Game Cola, like I don't know, 50 years ago. Yeah, right after your article about how they should make a Toad game. 
Hey, that's still a good idea. That is such a great idea. I don't know. Does anybody... Maybe it's just me, but I get the feeling they make a lot more of the Mario spin-offs than actual Mario games. Oh, they absolutely do. I mean, there are several spin-offs that come out every year, like the golf games, the tennis games, the Mario parties, the Mario karts, etc. I know, but I'm thinking of Wario, or whatever his name is, Wario. Oh, oh. Would that count as a I get the I, I get the feeling that he gets more games than Mario does nowadays. He's a more original character. I actually enjoy his games. Well, I played one of the Game Boy Advance ones. <laughs> that and WarioWare is pretty unique. That's a crappy game. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Well, I mean the Wii version, because every puzzle the is Wii just the is same. The Wii version is the one I like best. You tilt your Wiimote forward, okay, and you do that for five puzzles. You tilt it forward, you, what I was you move you it left and right, or up and down, depending on the puzzle. It's oh, so... do you remember what I was telling you about Super Smash Bros? Maybe if you had tried it with a big group of people, that's when it suddenly becomes fun. Same thing with Warrior, where you have to watch your friends do stupid things like, I don't know, the waiter, or whatever those dumb things were. No, I, I totally played by myself and cheated. We are so off topic. Oh, wait, no, we're I'm not. I'm discussing a video game. You're They're discussing probably... how you cheated at spinning. I think we were talking about E3 at one point. We were talking about E3, but in any case, um, I'm hoping they might have a Wii Zelda finally. Finally, <laughs> have. That, is that how we got on this topic? That's how we got on. That was our original well, thing. Well, there's a lot people have to say about Zelda. <laughs> I was hoping they would Things have. Like frustrations, obsession. I was hoping they would have a Wii Zelda, but I'm not holding my breath. I'm kind of thinking the, the Zelda Rides a Train is the only one you're going to get. Yeah, that's... yeah. No, I'm really? sad. Well, it's coming out yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah. He rides a train. Yay. I still don't know about that. Link, you're riding a train! He's on a train! But... Well, anyway, I'm sure we will have lots of fun challenges in Zelda Rides a Train, such as Zelda makes the uh, horn, or the steam engine whistle. Yeah, he pulls the whistle. <laughs> choo choo! You made the choo-choo sound loud enough, Link! You now get the Triforce! So, uh, they're going for three-year-old males here? Oh boy, you can be a train engineer! Oh, have you not played any of the, uh, Toon Zelda games? No. What well, nothing to do with it, it made me mad when I saw that redesign of him. <laughs> yes, so, um, this is like the fifth Toon Zelda game. Why do they keep doing that? Oh, geez, <laughs> yeah, ever since they introduced him, they've had one... Zelda game, and then all the rest are Toon Zelda. Mm. So, I'm just sad. Hmm. They should make a Zelda knockoff. Ah! I'm getting I'm getting too much into Zelda territory. Zelda Never mind. Zelda knockoff? Zelda knockout? No, I, I was going to say Zelda knockoff is that another company, or maybe what Sony could do is just make a blatant Zelda copy. Because now I that... Know they haven't tried already. Well, I was just saying, now that Zelda has gone into cartoon Zelda, Sony could actually turn a profit with the blatant Zelda copy of the uh, realistic Zelda. Don't they already try that? Everybody wanted to be, or have the success of the earlier Zelda games. I'm sure they all tried. Uh, they could actually have characters, unlike Twilight Princess, which has like two characters in it. Okay, Marianne, anything you you want to see at uh, E3? Hyrule that hasn't gone through the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> wow. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Price drop from Sony? That's the uh, another rumor. Uh, again? Right. On what? They're thinking that, oh, because of E3, Sony's going to drop the price. Yeah, of... I, don't they predict that at every, like, not even just E3, like every gaming convention, they predict that Sony will drop the price on PS3. What is it's... the price? 600000 Some. I think it's... Uh, like five hundred, maybe. It's five hundred dollars, which maybe, maybe depends we on the different up. models. Yeah. Strange too. You All of the models Sony. are overpriced, though. Uh, odd coincidence, though. You know how much the fee is to get into uh, E3? How much? Five hundred dollars. Wow. And we have so to you can go to E3 or own a PlayStation. You can go 3. and receive blatant advertising for these games, or you can save that money and buy the console in which to play the games. Yeah. Well, I I was I uh I just looked that up because I was hoping that maybe I could go to E3, but I can't because it's in Southern LA. We have to pay five hundred dollars and we have to get passed through their screening process. What is the screening process? No, they have to make sure that Game Cola is a real website and that they consider it legit. Which it totally is. I know. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, any other guess? What did I make? I made up a fake rumor about Lucas Arts making a sequel to uh, Day of the Tentacle and the Monkey Island series. Yeah, I'd be I'd be totally cool with that. A that crossover would, game. That would be a totally awesome game. Well, I I think I mean, Lucas Arts hasn't announced anything yet, so I mean maybe not necessarily that, but we can always hope that they're going to make a new adventure game. Well, are they making? They're never ever going to, but we can hope. Well, what about the Sam and Max games? Are are those that's, are just? That's not Lucas Arts. That's uh, Telltale Games. Oh, never mind then. Lucas Arts, yeah. you you disappoint me, then Lucas Arts. I know um, Ron Gilbert, who is one of the one of the people, the head designers of uh, the first two Monkey Island games. He has a. Uh, actually, I should probably talk about this in a later segment, but he has a uh, pseudo. It, it's like a crossover adventure game slash Diablo clone. Point and click adventure slash point and click RPG. Yeah. So that sounds kind of cool. It's called, uh, I believe it's called Death Spank Orphans of Justice. <laughs> and you want to explain the title? I don't know if they're actually showing that at E3 though, so not really relevant. Aww. They could make such a long adventure game nowadays. I think maybe that's why the adventure game, maybe that's why the point and clickers died out, mainly is because they got, they can make them way too long nowadays, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Oh, I know exactly why they died out. Why? I know exactly what happened. But what happened was that the companies decided they needed to uh, bring the genre up a little by, one, giving them ugly 3D graphics, and two, giving you direct control of the main character. Instead of pointing and clicking, you use a keyboard to control them. And everyone hated it and thought that was stupid, so nobody bought adventure games. And then the companies decided that, well, nobody buys adventure games, so we won't make them anymore. That is absolutely what happened. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's crap. Monkey Island 4, uh, King's Quest 8, uh, even to some extent, oh, God, what was that game with the skeletons? Monkey. Grim Fandango. Which uh, oh. was it was it a great story, great puzzles, but you really had to fight the game in order to play it. Like the controls are just not they you can't use them. <laughs> they don't work. Ah, uh, that's so, so sad. That's my totally correct theory on why nobody makes event. Well, actually, people do make adventure games now, but that's my totally correct yeah. theory on why they stopped. Which, which is why I think the Phoenix Wright series has a good thing going on. Um, I mean, because they divide each case of the game up into a segment which is just designed to be about like half an hour to an hour long. And I think that's just a good way to divide up your uh, point-and-click game so it doesn't right. last forever. Right. That makes sense. <clears throat> oh, man. Oh wait, I, I had <clears throat> I had a wild theory about what game we're gonna see announced at E3. You ready for this? Yes. I think Nintendo. We haven't heard anything from Nintendo yet. I would like to think that they are going to announce something that their core fans are going to really enjoy. Pikmin two. Uh, better. So you mean, I think I think they're gonna announce Kid Icarus for the Wii. <laughs> Marianne, Marianne just talked over what you said. Re, re make your announcement, Paul. I okay. I think they're going to announce Kid Icarus for the Wii. Whoa! Kid I don't that actually have sense. much to support that. I know. Uh, I think last year there were a lot of rumors about it, and there was there was some concept art floating around. But then um, all those rumors kind of died off. We haven't heard anything heard anything since. So my my wild theory is that they're going to announce it at E3, <laughs> and everyone's going to be very excited. Even though the Kid Icarus on the NES isn't actually that great. <laughs> Yes, I was confused as to why they had that character Pit in Super Smash Brothers in the first place, but ah. that makes sense. Now he's known before they have some reception of his game. That is, I, I disagree, Marianne, because what? they have so many characters in that game that are not known. Just basically all the Japanese-centric characters, like the Fire Emblem characters. Yeah, but they're known characters. in Japan, though. I but know. Fire Emblem became a lot more popular in the U.S. after they had those characters introduced in the No, movie. no, no. I remember... And so now they're having people become, I'm talking over you la, because la, I'm la, 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 People actually... La, 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 a younger la. audience, which is who's buying Super Smash Bros., I think, actually says, oh, hey, who's this pit guy? And so they'll have some recognition when they release the Wii game. As somebody who was a Fire Emblem fan before they released the series in the United States... You can read Japanese? No. 
I don't know where I was going with that, but they should have... <laughs> I was just... No, I know where I'm going. It's like, I was a fan of the series before they released it to the United States, and I wanted them to release it in the United States because it's a good series, and it would sell on its own. Not because of Super Smash Brothers. Oh, who buy Super Smash Brothers? Brothers? Japanese-only characters, though. Uh, Lucas, yeah, the Mother Brown, Mother, right. Mother Three. Yeah, actually, they they still haven't released Mother Three here, have they? They have refused to release Mother Three. There was a press conference or a press release about that. What? What's the issue? Hey, what if, what if they announced Mother Three at Earth or at, <laughs> at E3? That would be so awesome. What is Mother Three? What is Third it? Third stepmother. I don't know. <laughs> it's the new Earthbound game. I, I don't know what Earthbound is because it's a Japanese game series. But you know what Fire Emblem was? Yeah. But that's it's only it's because I wrote a guide for Fire Emblem the Gaiden, which is the best one in the series, and I want to see it re released in uh, English. Or at least I want to see a translation released, which wasn't a fan translation that somebody gave up on after 10 minutes. What then? You wrote a guide for a game that was all in Japanese? No, no, no. The person wrote a fan translation, but he gave up less, probably like after 10, 15 minutes. So you gave a guide for these first 10 to 15 minutes of the game, otherwise what would it be? Click the Japanese symbols that look like this to win the game. Marianne, have you played the Fire Emblem games? Nope. <laughs> okay, then you... never mind. I mean, translating, say, like, Super Mario 2 from Japanese to English, would that be a challenge? Yes, no, maybe so. Part 5 is not a dialogue-based game. <laughs> okay, well it is a dialogue-based game, but very much less so. Uh, because, it, because it's an NES game, but it has a pretty good plot, and as far as I can tell it has a pretty good plot. I can't tell because half of it is garbled up letters <laughs> because the person didn't finish his translation. I'm thinking what if you happen to pick up Mass Effect before there was a translation of that? <laughs> You would get your character so screwed in the game. <laughs> and the character names don't even matter. I actually, uh, I probably should discuss this on Inside the Guide, but I had to write another guide which details all the plot and all the characters in the game trying to figure out just what the heck is going on. Because he spells like one character's name differently every single time that character is mentioned. Which completely threw me off. Okay, let me see. What other games do I have? Professor Layton... Are they ever going to release the second game in English? No. They they put it on the shelf with Mother 3 and Fire Emblem Gaiden. No, I'm sad. Actually, um, that was kind of odd at the Game Developers Conference that the uh, companies that are really going into uh, releasing games in other parts of the world... What was it? What's the proper term? Localization? Globalization? Localization. No, lo localization. localization. That's the localization that... Microsoft is the uh, company that's big on localization. They apparently made a ton of money by localizing uh, Fable 2 or 4 or 6. I don't know how many mm -hmm. games are in the Fable series. I love two. two. Just two. But they made a ton of money localizing it into uh, Australia and England. Which you think they would not bother to do because they speak English in England. You think and they bother? So what? They just change the spelling of some words? No, they change the dialogue and the spelling. Yeah, they make a bunch it of random use everywhere. They just change pretty much. They change all the dialogue so it's more natural to a British person. Hmm. That seems like a, a lot of work. I mean, does, does it really? Does, did it pay off for them? It did pay off amazingly. It paid off super well. well. How, did, how do they know that it, people were buying it because of that and not just because it was fable? You think people would have bought it anyway? Why do they have to make it more Australian centric? It's a fantasy universe. I don't know. I was just saying that was the thing. That was the presentation they gave at the game developers game conference. Got on the body. They, I'm wondering. I'm just wondering where they get that information from. What makes them think that it's the localization specifically that made them get a lot more money on the game? Uh, it's if you release a localized game. Uh, they just chart like um, how much money they get off a localized game and how much money you get off a a, a non localized game. Mm. What are they like? Can you compare games like that? Can you say like Fable Two? It is a localized game. Mario Galaxy was not. Fable Two sold more than Mario Galaxy. Therefore, it was the localization. There are too many confounding variables. I don't think they can make that yeah. statement true. Okay, whatever. I don't remember the article I read about that anymore, but that was their point, that localization is worth the effort, and I'm thinking that... I, I, I need to, I need to see their data that supports this. <laughs> okay, I'll 
I'll find it for you, I guess. I'll try to find it. I'll try to find it and put it in the podcast notes. But I'm saying that Microsoft is apparently a fan of localization, whereas companies like Nintendo are not, which is probably why Nintendo is not going to be releasing games like Mother 3 in English. Universal appeal. I can go over games that work that way. They really did a horrible uh, localization job with some of their other games, though, too. Like the Zelda games, all they do for localization is they throw in, like, a Simpsons reference, and that's it. <laughs> that's well, why it. would they need to? Same thing I said with Fable. It's a fantasy universe. Why do they have to make it American-centric? Well, no. And Link goes to McDonald's to fill up on energy. No, but Marianne, I'm just saying, the only Americanization in that game was... Do he saw us, and they misspelled do, which is why I noticed it. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Zelda guys, you can work a little bit harder. Who are those guys who do the uh, Nintendo localization? Oh, shouldn't localization be a part of translation in the first place? Of course, you have to have language or colloquialisms that the country's going to understand, right? I know, but there are only like two people who do that for uh, Nintendo: Jeff Miller and Leslie Swan. You'll notice when you're, I know them because when you watch, when you uh, beat a Mario game or a Zelda game, they're the only non-Japanese games in the credits. <laughs> so I get the feeling that they just do localization, they just, localization aka translating for all the games. Super Paper Mario, I mean, uh, not Super Paper Mario, but I think Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, I think they did a good job with localizing that because they had a third party do it. That's true. I remember the humor was well regarded in that game. Yeah, that's because they had a third party guy do it. They had somebody else who wasn't working from Nintendo. They just gave him, like, here's our 200 pages of stuff that we have translated. You get to make it funny, Americanize it, do what you do what you want with it. Yeah. And it was a success. They had an interview with him in Nintendo Power, which is how I know. What a very cool job. I'd love to do that. It's cool, but in the same sense, it's not cool. In that, uh, let me see, Mario has, like, six different partners in that game. Six people are on his team. So for every single cutscene, he had to write it six different times. <laughs> Depending on which, which uh, sidekick would be uh, with Mario at the moment. So basically, I think... Eventually, you'd go crazy because you have to write the same. You have you have to write everything six different times, but slightly different each time. And the person did a really, really good job with that. That's something I do when I replayed the game. It's like, okay, I see this cutscene. I'm going to now. I save before a cutscene, then I watch it, and then I re then I load my earlier game and rewatch it with a different character. It's very interesting. Marianne, where have you gone? Paul, where have you gone? Oh, no, Paul's, here. Paul's asleep. Wait, did she just say she put the dogs to sleep? Marianne, no! No! I think that's the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. They're not going to pay me for taking care of the dogs now. Marianne, come over here. Talk about Rock Band Unplugged. What Rock Band game do you want to see? What Rock Band songs do you want to see? You're going to have to move over here so the microphone can get your voice, and then talk about Rock Band. Talk. No, don't rub the doggy's stomach. Ugh, fine. What am I supposed to say here? Rock Band? Yeah, what Rock Band? What do you think about Rock Band? Rock Band Beatles. What? Yeah, they're making... So they are taking another hint from Guitar Hero, which is doing, say, Guitar Hero, Metallica, Aerosmith, Rock Band, Beatles, though. Why? Because they're the greatest rock band in the history of Britain. Oh, Britain. Yes, well, British is fine. Paul, do you like the Beatles? Meh. Okay, never mind. We All need right. to get a Beatles yeah, fan on here just so we can just start ripping on you the Beatles. You expect to find a Beatles fan among our generation? Um, they're way back then. <laughs> Yeah, they are sort of 50s. And then, and then they, they got... Rock Band Weezer, then I'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rock Band, they might be giants, and then I'll play it. <laughs> Interesting, yeah, you think there might be a rush to grab the right bands? For they, example, they they've already taken Metallica and Aerosmith. Yeah. So Rock Band's going to take whatever's left, and then Guitar Hero will take some other band? Yeah, well, I was just saying, they can't do a, a Rock Band, uh, they might be giants, because they've got a guy on the piano slash accordion. 
and and so they, they have include a big plastic piano with the, with that. Yeah, there'd be the piano and the plastic accordion. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to say piano hero. Could that actually teach you something? They have two people on the. Uh, oh, hey, mom's calling. Oh, we gotta stop the whole thing. Your mom's calling. Hey, mom. Hey. <laughs> How's it going? Good. We're shopping. So, mom, what? We shopped for hours. Sick of shopping. We have a question for you, mom. What do you think about a, a Beatles rock band game? Do you think parents would buy it then? What? A rock band game. You know that guitar music playing game we had at Aunt Dolo's for Christmas? Slash I had a yeah, mess. Yeah, they're playing. Yeah, they're making a Beatles version. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Do you think kids are going to buy it though? Are the do Beatles that popular? Or like See, a kid will say, I want rock band for Christmas and I'm sorry. So you think the parents will buy the game because they want to play it themselves? Hey, whenever you go and you see people who play those games, who has to push them over? The parents. Paul, your thoughts? Do, do your parents buy most of your games for you? No, no, I'm talking about little kids when you see them. Like, whenever you see Jack and the Rock, those kids playing, you see Uncle Murphy play that too, and uh, Ryan, big time. Well, yeah, but that's because Ryan's cool, and, um, I think... <laughs> Parents might assume that with the Beatles, they'll at least get family friendly I'm lyrics. I'm just thinking about all the games that mostly the parents buy for their kids. I think in the games that I can tell which ones Aunt Dolo bought, those are mm -hmm. the bad ones, which are just, like, licensed games. Like, Wall-E, the yeah, game. Yeah, that's not a point, though. I mean, your, your generation is against the Beatles. Yeah. They are. And the other generation of kids certainly are into the Beatles. They are? Wow. They are not. They are not, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely not. Appeal directly to the parents then, buy this game and share the wonders of the Beatles with their kids. Okay, I'm going to talk with my mom specifically. You chat with Whoa. Paul, Marianne. Michael's discussing private issues. Are you still even there? Oh yeah, I'm still here. Do <laughs> <laughs> you understand any of what his mom was saying? I think distortion from the phone. I, yeah, actually, I could hear it uh, reasonably well. I think a podcast listener should be able to hear it, I think. Hopefully. So, uh, how about that? We had a Beatles fan call in at the right time. <laughs> very conveniently. <laughs> very, very conveniently. Uh, I don't know, I, I think there are a lot of people who would want to buy that, uh, just because our age group necessarily wouldn't. I mean, the 30-somethings, the 50-somethings, some of them play video games. I don't know, when, when, when were the Beatles big? The 60s? Yeah, 60s. Okay, maybe that's... <laughs> I can't see kids. Well, <laughs> I know there are, there are... Actually, no, though, I mean, the rock band uh, rock band and Guitar Hero are both very popular with casual gamers, so maybe the uh, older crowd would be interested in that. Oh, uh, yeah. Should sell well uh, on the Wii, then, the family console. <laughs> that's actually where I have it, Rock Band 2 on Wii. Well, yeah, Rock Band 2, I only have the first one. <laughs> I kind of gave up after a while because they, they kept making me play songs I don't like in order to, to progress uh, yeah, in the game. Yeah, that pissed me off. Took too long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I mentioned this before, but it would be really awesome uh, if when you buy the game, you, like considering how many songs there are available for the games now, you get they just give you, like, it doesn't come with any songs, and it gives you credit to just buy whatever songs you want. Mm -hmm. And then you can just fill the whole game with songs you actually want to play. That would be totally awesome. It would be. And yeah, that would make me, like, buy another Rock Band game. I don't really want to play them anymore until they do that. Yeah. That's sort of like, um, I don't know, Super Smash Bros. Brawl is that uh, if you want to play as Sonic, you ha you're going to have to play the game for about 50 hours before you yeah. can unlock him. Oh, and then you're stuck really? playing as characters you hate then in single-player mode. Yeah, yeah, you have to get all the way to the you end of... You want to play Sonic, you got to play Ice Climbers first. You have to unlock Sonic? Yeah. What's wrong with those these people? Did you see how randomly he's thrown in at the very end of that cutscene there? Yeah, that was... Oh, and all of a sudden Sonic is here and he's gonna fight Taboo with you. <laughs> what a terrible idea. Yeah, so I'm just saying, that's the problem I have with Super Smash Bros. Brawl, is that they... All the good stuff, or not all the good stuff, but... Sonic, you have to play so much in order to unlock him. It's well, not fun. That's kind of a problem I have with unlockables in general, is that... I kind of want them right away, especially if it's a multiplayer game. Like, if I just bought a game, I'm gonna, I want to play with my friends that day. I don't want to have to play it for 50 hours first to get the cool stuff to play with my friends. I want it right then and right then, right now. Yeah. That's why they include cheats. Oh, well, that's helpful. Yeah. 
Oh, I suppose it depends on the unlockable. I mean, our, I don't know what unlockables I'm thinking of, but for the Castlevania games, it's basically you play the game and they, you get the unlockables, play as the second character with the different attack physics and all that sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're replaying the same game, but you play as a different character, so it's somewhat different and it somewhat adds to replayability. I, I, I kind of think it's just a bigger problem with multiplayer games where you have to play the stupid ass single player mode for forty hours before you get to like do the get to unlock the stuff that you want to play with your friends. Yeah, I think that's kind of a bad idea. But I mean, that just might be a personal taste. Marianne, take over the video game industry, then change the way they do things. Ah, <laughs> uh, if well, only. if we keep talking about it enough on Game Cola, then companies <laughs> will probably listen and stop doing it. How many companies listen to the Game Cola podcast, by the way? <laughs> oh, the good ones. Well, not Nintendo, of course. Um, I don't have those numbers available. Capcom. Capcom does, right? Capcom is a friend of Game Cola, TM. Right? Yes. Well, we do get review copies from them occasionally. And uh, Telltale Games, they're a big friend of Game Cola. I don't know anything about how to uh, connect your uh, console to the internet, but I know it's possible. I'm hopefully going to be able to figure out how to connect my Wii to the interweb. The Wii is harder than the other systems. I don't know how it works because the, uh, I think... That's what you want to do on your channel, you're saying that you're well, the... Which costs money? Question I think uh, the, the big problem with doing it on the Wii is that you have to exchange friend codes. Yeah. yeah it's a huge to pain. Marianne, have you tried to send me knees? Knees are stupid, by the way. Marianne needs to get closer to the microphone again. Marianne, get closer to the microphone. She's left, she left the, she keeps squeaky to it. She keeps she leaving the, the room the in order to play with dogs. I thought she killed them all. <laughs> she spared one. I'll, I'll, I'll bring her back. Marianne, talk about me's. Do you spit into the whole idea of the Wii being the family-friendly console? Yeah. Do you so like my grandmother who wouldn't know what a video game was if you didn't tell her can get into it? Mies? I liked it when I first got the system. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Me's were fun, like, the first day you play the Wii, and then they're just kind of there. It's interesting enough in some games where you say, Oh, look, it's Batman, and he's playing tennis with me, or whatever. <laughs> 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 but they never really look like Batman. Oh, mine does. I could send you these cool things I made if you had it installed. I've shown you the ones I tried to make where it's like, oh, I'll try to make a Harry Potter. Oh, and I tried to make like a Harry Potter and it comes out internet stalker. <laughs> I've got a good looking Harry Potter on mine. You can play as Harry Potter in some game if you want. Come on my me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Harry Potter, good looking. These things in the same sentence. Well, what games so that you E3? play? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something I wanted to say uh, about E3 is uh, something I want to see from Nintendo is some sort of ability to play like the DS on on your TV. Whoa. Whoa, you blew my mind. Well, at least just That's some sort of, like the PSP, just some sort of way that I can connect my RCA cables to the game. Like they had Super that with Game, Game Boy. Boy Advance, didn't they? Yeah, with Super Game Boy. They had it with the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, they have the uh, GameCube. Uh, yeah. Connectivity thing. In fact, I'm sorry. Pokemon Stadium, they had this way for you to even put in your Game Boy original games. For that series. Just because I like to watch the speedruns, uh, and it is impossible. They don't have any speedruns for uh, the Nintendo DS games, because that involves turning off all the lights and holding your camera while at the same time as holding the system and playing it. You can play it on your computer, but oh, they're picky about that. Well, you can't play it on your computer, Marianne, because that's emulation, and they don't allow emulation. You can do it without cheating. cheating, and then actually film what you're doing. There was a speed run for Super Mario 64 DS released. And I don't see why that's impressive, though. Again, we're free to the five minute one. <laughs> Marianne, that is a stupid. Uh, it was awesome, it abused every glitch, you could go through walls. And it abused every glitch! That's not, that's not a speed run, that's called a glitch run. It's not the same as, say, entering a game shark code, right? He just abused every little glitch in the way the game was made. No, 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 Marianne. It's completely different. See, a speedrun is supposed to be... Yeah, it looks a lot cooler. I don't have time to sit through an hour of a pipeline Super Mario. Ugh, 
Paul, do you have an opinion on speedrunning? Uh, I don't. No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I was about to say I don't think it's very interesting, but then I remembered the one time I watched a Mario three speed one, and it was actually really cool. Yeah, I'm just saying. It's and cool. I actually, when I was uh, when I was looking on YouTube to see if anyone else made Day of the Tentacle videos, which, by the way, apparently everyone has already done a Day of the Tentacle walkthrough video. Yeah. Um, I saw I saw there was a speed run of like 25 minutes for Day of the Tentacle. That's, that kind of interesting. that's interesting. I want to check that I out now. I didn't watch it or anything. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it now. But what I'm trying to say is, I don't think it's interesting when somebody does a speedrun of Super Mario 64 on the computer because they use an emulator, and then they use save states, and they use re-recording in case they miss a jump, they just record them doing the jump again. And lots of them use, like, they slow down the game in order to give themselves perfect timing for every single jump. That's not impressive gaming skills. That's using the computer to do all the work for you. I want to see somebody... See somebody that's like, wow, this guy's played the game a lot. He has good gaming skills. He's good at gaming, not this just... This guy has what else going for him in life? Rather than, <laughs> oh, this guy can abuse the, uh, you know, a ten-year-old system. Yeah, I let the dogs out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I let the dogs out. Ooh, 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 ooh. And as the dogs left for the backyard, so the Game Cola Podcast crew must leave you. This was Game Cola Podcast number 10, brought to you by GameCola.net, video game humor. The podcasters tonight were Marianne Fenwick, Paul Franzen, and Michael Gray. The uh, episode was recorded and edited by Michael Gray. The music you heard at the beginning of the podcast was Put Your Hands on the Computer by They Might Be Giants off of their album, Cast your pod to the wind. Once again, this has been Game Cola Podcast Episode 10, The Big E3 Preview.